Three centuries have passed since the publication of John Bunyan's book, Pilgrim's Progress. Yet, second in volume of sales only to the Bible itself, Pilgrim's Progress continues to be one of the most widely read and influential books ever written. Translated into many languages, released in a continuing variety of editions, the book's influence reaches from the university classroom to the nursery. Bedford, England, now a thriving industrial community, looked like this when John Bunyan walked these very streets during the mid to latter years of the 17th century. One remarkably well-preserved building, where some say the writer took part in parachurch worship, now serves as the Bunyan Museum. Here the visitor finds a replica of the kind of living room one might have seen in the Bunyan home. Both his birthplace and the house where he lived no longer exist. The museum, known as Moot Hall, does contain such Bunyan memorabilia as the actual pulpit, from which the young man heard sermons which profoundly influenced his life and thought. Also the door to one of the two Bedford prisons where he spent one-fifth of his life and where he wrote his famous book. Faithful to his church, this church, Bunyan was not content to receive his spiritual food from sermons alone. Though he brought his family to this sanctuary faithfully each Sunday, he also became an avid student of the scriptures himself. It was this study of the Bible which caused him to ask many questions about the conduct of the church, as well as of his own lifestyle. For example, he served for a time as the Sunday morning bell ringer, a task he enjoyed so immensely he came to think of it as sinful. He feared lest one day when he entered the tower to ring the bell, it might come crashing down upon him in divine judgment. Elstow, the little village adjacent to Bedford where Bunyan actually lived, was a religious center in his day. This spacious abbey became a kind of community social structure as well as religious. Though a stained glass window in the church now commemorates the author and his book, John Bunyan, from his study of the Bible, came into sharp disagreement with the church. Many of the scenes in his Pilgrim's Progress not only depict Bunyan's personal struggles, but also the inequities he saw in the established church. As this plaque commemorates, he paid dearly for his disagreements with the religious leaders of his day. A small jail, part of the entrance to Bedford, stood on this bridge. Here, during the year he spent as a prisoner, John Bunyan began the writing of Pilgrim's Progress. Today, the descendants of the community hold him in honor. Then, it was a different story. For John Bunyan dared to speak out against hypocrisy. Although never brought to a proper trial, he spent 11 more years in the main prison of Bedford. It was during this time he completed his book. John Bunyan lies buried in one of the storied old cemeteries to be found in the city of London. Nearby rest the remains of another famous author who is said to have been strongly influenced by Bunyan's writings. In a much less pretentious resting place, overlooked by most visitors to the cemetery, can be found the grave of Susanna Wesley, mother of the two famous brothers, John and Charles. Still one more famous man lies buried here, a man profoundly influenced by the book Pilgrim's Progress. His name, Isaac Watts, writer of many of the most treasured hymns in the Christian church. Today, scholars still try to fathom the motivations and to understand the greatness of the man John Bunyan. We shall simply occupy ourselves with a visualization of his famous story, Pilgrim's Progress.
wages, death, wages, death, wages, wages, death, death. The wages of sin is death, is death, wages, death, wages, death, wages, wages, death, death. Oh Lord, what must I do to be saved? The wages of sin is death, is death. Wages, death, wages, death, wages, wages, death, death. The wages of sin is death, is death. The soul that sins must die, must die. The wages of sin is death. The soul that sins must die, must die. The wages of sin is death. The burden of his sins, sore and heavy upon his back, Pilgrim had forsaken the city of destruction to set out in search of the celestial city. He was prepared to face whatever obstacle might come in his way, even death itself. Not only did Pilgrim bear the heavy burden upon his back, but the road he must travel held many pitfalls and dangers, many trials and disappointments. And added to these, indeed the cause of much of these, would be his great enemy, the enemy of his very soul. In contrast to the burden upon his back, the traveler carried a book, the very book of life. It was the message of this book which had caused him to leave the city of destruction. But although the enemy of his soul would continually seek to disrupt his journey, there would also be those to counsel and guide him. May I help you, Pilgrim? I have been watching you. You seem very troubled. I am very troubled. This book tells me of a great judgment coming down from heaven. I tried to warn my wife and children, my friends and neighbors, but they wouldn't listen to me. The judgment of which you speak is true. You are wise to heed the warning. Let me introduce myself. My name is Evangelist. Evangelist. Then perhaps you can help me. You see, I'm not ready for God's judgment. That's why I left the city of destruction. Why do you stand here? Because I don't know where to go. How, kind sir, how can I escape God's judgment? Here is a key. It is the key of promise. Do you see that gate in the distance? No, sir, I don't. Do you see a light? I think I do. Good. Go directly toward that light. It will lead you to a gate. When you come to the gate, knock, and you will be told what to do. The people living in darkness. In darkness. In darkness. Have seen a great light. A great light. A great light. In, In the, the shadow, shadow of death. death. The shadow of death. A light has dawned. A light has dawned. A light has dawned. A light has dawned. 
A neighbor in the city of destruction, pliable by name, took it upon himself to find Pilgrim and bring him back to his wife and family. In reality, Pilgrim had not left his family. Instead, his wife, influenced by the scoffing of their neighbors, refused to flee with her husband from the condemned city. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Obstinate. My name is uh, Pliable. Uh, pliable. Pliable? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Fine family, the Pliables. I know the name. Fine family. I I I'm trying to catch up to Pilgrim. Pilgrim? Pilgrim? I don't believe I ever heard the name. He just left this morning. He left his wife and his children and his friends. Pity, pity, such a pity. Much too much of that sort of thing these days, isn't there? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Much too much. Can you help me? I've got to bring Pilgrim back to his wife and children. Bring him back to sanity, you mean to say? <laughs> but of course I can help you. I uh, specialize in helping chaps like you. I do, I do. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, when we catch up with this weak-minded fellow, you might best leave the talking to me. I've had a lot of experience with his kind. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walks about. Your adversary, the devil, walks about. Your adversary, the devil, Ah, oh, there you are, Pilgrim. I've come all the way. I told you to let me do the talking. Oh, yes, Mr. Obstinate. Sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, well, what a pleasure. You are Pilgrim, I believe. Pilgrim. Ah, yes. Fine people, the pilgrims. Yes, 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 I know the family well. Fine people. But you said, though. Was there something you're wanting of me? We want you to go back to the city of... Dis to your wife and children. I cannot go back. Our city is a city of destruction. It is to be destroyed by the judgment of God. <laughs> Complete nonsense. People have been saying that for years, believe me, I know. And judgment has never come. Never, never, never. Nor will it ever come. No, no. What about Noah? 
as it was in the days of Noah, so also... Noah? Noah? Can't say I've ever heard the name. And I know all the important families, believe me. Now be sensible, my friend, and come back home. Pilgrim. <laughs> A fine name. Yes, yes, yes. Don't disgrace it. Go back to the city of destruction? I cannot. Why don't you come with me? We can escape the judgment of God together. We can escape the judgment of God? Yes, we can. Nonsense. Preposterous, idiotic, fanatical, impossible nonsense. Is it nonsense, Pilgrim? Not nonsense, Pliable. Eternal truth. In this book, it says we must seek for an inheritance that never fades away. Inheritance? The only way to get an inheritance is to go back to your families. Yes, yes, back to your families. How about it, Pilgrim? Are you coming with us or not? I cannot turn back. All right, then, Pliable. Let's go home without him. I, I think I should go with Pilgrim. Follow that sick-brained fellow? I'll come back pliable and be wise. We can escape the judgment of God. Judgment of God. <coughs> ah, 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 ah. It is appointed unto men. Once to die. And after, after that, that, the judgment. judgment. Do you think the words of your book are certainly true, Pilgrim? As the book itself says, they're written in the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before the world began. What other things does the book say, Pilgrim? We are promised an everlasting salvation. We may earn a crown of righteousness. There shall be no more sorrow or crying. He that is owner of the place will wipe all tears from our eyes. Will people scoff at us there? No, Pliable. Wonderful, wonderful. And who will be at this place? Thousands and ten thousands who have gone before us. They're all loving and holy. Everyone walking in the sight of God, acceptable unto him forever. I can't wait to get there. I don't like being scoffed at, Pilgrim. Don't worry, Pliable. They're the children of darkness. Pilgrim, I'm hungry and thirsty. journey's not as I expected it would be, Pilgrim. The book doesn't promise an easy journey, but it does promise a wonderful destination. <laughs> can't we go faster, Pilgrim? I'm eager to reach this place. I can't go any faster because of this burden on my back. Perhaps we should find a place to sleep for the night. No, Pilgrim. 
Let's hurry on. I can't wait to find this place your book tells about. In his foolish eagerness, Pliable put from his mind such lurking dangers as the slough despond, an iniquitous swamp into which many a foot-weary pilgrim had fallen prey to the wiles of the evil one. This is a strange way for both of us. We must watch our step in the darkness. wonderful place your book speaks of. If it's like this at the journey's beginning, what will it be like at the end? Help me. Help me. My burden is pulling me deeper into the mire. I leave you to possess the beautiful kingdom your book talks about. Help! Help! My name is Help. I heard you calling. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I met a man who told me to come this way. His name is Evangelist. But you should not have gone alone in the darkness. The slough of Despond is filled with the scum and filth of man's wickedness. Sinners who were awakened to their lost condition but have fears and doubts often fall into this terrible place. And you rescue such people? If they will permit me to. Where sin abounds. God's grace much more abounds. Those words are in this book. I must leave you now. But just up above, you will find a place of shelter for the night. Pilgrim continued upon his way as the enemy of his soul increased his efforts against the traveler. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walks about. Your adversary, the devil, walks about. Your adversary, the devil. I say there, you look famished. You seem to be hungry. Come to my little cottage, we'll fix you something to eat. Some food, some food. Yes, yes, yes. How rude of me. My name is Wiseman, worldly Wiseman. My name is Pilgrim. Pilgrim? Pilgrim? Oh, yes, 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 yes. That name sounds familiar. But of course, of course. Fine people, the pilgrims. Fine people indeed. You, of course, will have heard of my family. We are high stock, we are, if I do say so. 
Oh, yes, yes. Ask us anything, anything you like, and you will find the answer. Uh, for instance, how did you come by that pack upon your back? There's a gate I must find, and when I find it, I'll be told how to be rid of this burden. <laughs> and who told you about any such gate? Someone I met along the way. His name is Evangelist. Evangelist? Ha! Dullards, the whole lot of them. They are pilgrim. Dullards, dullards. You follow the way this evangelist directs, and all kinds of misery await you. Hunger, perils, nakedness, the sword. Didn't he also talk about a cross? <laughs> His way! Utter foolishness! But the burden I carry is so great, Mr. Wiseman. I would gladly face all these things you speak of, if, at the end of my journey, I may be delivered from this burden. And how did you come by this burden in the first place? By reading this book. I should have known. Should have. Should have. You would one day name me your greatest friend if I toss this book into my fire. I will go. But wait, wait, you haven't eaten. Precocity, bring the food. Wait, wait, I want to help you. I perceive you are a religious man, which is good, good, very good. The world needs more religious people. It does, Pilgrim, it does. Do you see that hill just yonder? At the top of that hill is the village of Morality. It's a lovely little place, lovely, lovely. I wish I lived there myself. I do, Pilgrim, I do. Only it doesn't quite suit me. But a dear friend of mine lives there, Mr. Legality. It's the first house at the top of the hill. Mr. Legality will show you how to be rid of that burden of yours. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Pilgrim, what are you doing here? Why have you so quickly turned aside from the way? I met a gentleman who told me how I might be rid of this burden I carry. But you have read the words in the book. Those words are alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? I have sinned. I have sinned! Be not faithless, pilgrim, like those who walk the broad road to destruction. 
remember, the just shall live by faith. Worldly wise men tried to bring eternal condemnation upon you. First, he turned you from the way, from the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Second, he tried to make the cross an offense to you. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to those who would escape destruction, pilgrim, the preaching of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. Is there any hope for me? Can I still find the gate of which you told me? Yes, pilgrim, you may yet find the way. You may escape the fires of judgment. So may anyone who will heed the message of the book. By grace you are saved. Through faith, through faith. Not of works. The gift of God. Saved through faith. The gift of God. Saved through faith. The gift of God. By the deeds of the law shall no one be justified, saved through faith. The gift of God. The wicked are like the troubled sea. And it cannot rest, and it cannot rest. The wicked are like the troubled sea. And it cannot rest. The wicked are like the troubled sea. And it cannot rest. The wicked are like the troubled sea. And it cannot rest, and it cannot rest. Rest. Seek, seek, and you shall find, and you shall find. Knock, knock, it shall be opened, it shall be opened. Seek, seek, and you shall find, and you shall find. Knock, knock, it shall be opened, it shall be opened. Good evening, my friend. I am Mr. Goodwill. Who are you? And from where have you come? And where are you going? My name is Pilgrim. I am a burdened sinner from the city of destruction, seeking the way to eternal life. You seek the way, do you, Pilgrim? You are very wise. Come. I will show you. How is it you travel alone, Pilgrim? Because no one would listen when I warned of the coming judgment. My friends and neighbors laughed at me, my own family. So it is, too often in this world. Please, Mr. Goodwill, might you be able to help me take this burden from my back? The answer is in the book you carry. And just up the way, you will find the house of Mr. Interpreter. Go to him, Pilgrim. He will help you. I thank you. Thank you. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Narrow the way that leads to life. Broad is the way to destruction. Destruction. Narrow the way to life. To life. Broad is the way to destruction. Destruction. Narrow the way to life. To life. Come in. I have been waiting for you. Here in the house of Mr. Interpreter, Pilgrim would at last receive the information needed to assure the success of his journey. For like the golden key the traveler carried in his pocket, Mr. Interpreter's words would open Pilgrim's mind to the wisdom and treasures in the book. Anticipation came like the warming sun to the young man's seeking heart. What is the meaning of this picture? The man in the picture says with the apostle, my dear children, for whom I am in the pains of childbirth until Christ be formed in you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And the crown above his head, this is to show that as also may we, he can say with the apostle, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. After we are set free from our sins, we must fight the good fight, 
We must finish the course. Then there will be waiting for us a crown of righteousness. Come, let me show you more. You wonder about the burden on your back. That I do, Mr. Interpreter. I surely do. This floor is like the heart of man before he experiences the power of the gospel, which is the very power of God unto salvation. The dust is the sin in every heart. The broom represents the law, or you might also say the effort by good works to justify your sins. But the book you hold in your hand tells you, by the works of the law shall no one be justified. Only the power of the gospel can take away sin. If any man be in Christ, your book tells you, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. No. Yes, Mr. Interpreter had shown the way, his words like a lamp in a place of darkness. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the words of this book shall never pass away. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You must be born again. It is by grace you are saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift from God, not by works, so that no one can boast. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, you pilgrim, through his poverty, might become rich. So that you, through his poverty, might become rich. So that you, through his poverty, might become rich. So that you, through his poverty, might become rich. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. His suffering brings us peace. By his strength, we are healed. Father, forgive them. Forgive me. By this gospel you are saved, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. The words of this book shall never pass away. 
Your name shall no longer be pilgrim. Your name shall now be Christian. There is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets us free from the law of sin and death. No longer pilgrim, but now Christian. The traveler continued his sure steps toward the celestial city. Hello, my friend and brother. May I journey with you? My name is Faithful. I also walk in the way. It was as though Christian and Faithful had been brothers since birth. So unique is this kinship of the Spirit, this oneness in a faith which makes all who so believe members of the same family. Together they shared past experiences the difficulties they had faced, the blessings they had known. And together they looked with anticipation and confidence toward the continuation of their journey. Be like-minded, having the same love. Be one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain deceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. You also fell into the slough of despond. Did you faithful? But worse than that, at the foot of the hill of difficulty, I met first Adam, who lives in the town of deceit. He offered me his three daughters. Beautiful they were, as the world sees beauty. What were their names? Their names? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Did you... Did you resist them, Faithful? By the grace of God, I did. How true are the words of the book. Let us beware the snare of the fowler. Did I not quote from the book saying, let us beware of the snare of the fowler? You did. We had no evil intentions. Why were we caught in Satan's net? Because we are mortals. But listen, I quoted from the book incorrectly. It reads here of our Lord. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Deliver us, Christian, from this? Yes, faithful, he will deliver us. It is a promise of his book. And not one of his promises has ever been broken. He delivered me from my strong enemy. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. It was a great deliverance, a time for joy and wonderment. But then, from across the nearby hills, came the sounds of Vanity Fair. Go. You are in the world but not of the world. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among men. I said in my heart, enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. 
I made great works. I built houses. I planted vineyards. I gathered silver and gold. Vanity Fair, so like so much of the world, where people look to shallow laughter and the dust of things, to sham and shadow for their satisfaction. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> What shall we do, Christian? I think it's best we keep quiet. to death, or of obedience and righteousness. In Vanity Fair, for all its wickedness and wantonness, lived a young man by the name of Hopeful. Not of our kingdom. In all his young years, Hopeful had never seen anyone defy the prince. But neither had he seen anyone quite like these two strangers who had so suddenly appeared. Give me the book. Does this book command you not? to bow down before me. Does it? It does, sir. <laughs> Shall we burn the book? Burn the book! Yes, burn the book. <laughs> yes, burn the book. yes. Burn the book! Or shall we burn them? I condemn you both to be burned. Burn! 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 
as the clamor of the throng echoed in the distance, crying out for the burning of the two pilgrims. A strange fire came into Hopeful's heart, fire and hunger, and the courage to seek out whether there really might be a better way. followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. Bring the torch. Let him burn. Your name is Hopeful. It suits you well. For many years, my heart was full of an empty hope. But now, through your book, I have the hope of eternal life. My eyes have never before seen such wonders. Surely the enemy of our souls is far from this place. Not only was the enemy near, but as the two travelers came upon Bypath Meadow, hopefulness took beauty for truth in their search to follow the right way. Wait, see how pleasant it is this way. Come on, Christian. See that storm ahead of us. We're still going. 
going the wrong way, hopeful. There's a shepherd's shelter. Look, Christian, a castle where we might have found shelter for the night. Perhaps we can find something to eat. How could it be two travelers who had been so intent upon their search for the celestial city? What will happen to us? Our fate will be like theirs. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. You shall know the truth. The truth. The truth. The truth shall set you free. Set you free. Set you free. The key. The key of promise. It will open any door. Set you free. Set you free. You shall know the truth. The truth. The truth. The truth, the truth shall, shall set you free. Set you free. Set you free. Bypath Meadow, a pleasant way, but the wrong way. Only a few steps farther had Christian and Hopeful continued on the right way, and they would have been spared the grief of Doubting Castle. They could have entered much sooner into that beauteous terrain which marked the beginning of the end of their journey.
in this beautiful place of fruit and flowers, milk and honey, Christian and Hopeful came upon the shepherd's camp. But more than shepherds they were, much more. They were guardians and guides, true friends and true brothers. Welcome. This is Emmanuel's land. My name is Knowledge. My name is Watchful. My name is Experience. My name is Sincere. I am Christian, and this is my companion, Hopeful. Since this is Emmanuel's land, we must be nearing the celestial city. Aye, that you are. Quickly, Watchful, let us show them. Look, Hopeful, look. Come, Christian, we must be on our way. It is yet a long journey. And you have traveled a great distance. Stay here and rest a while. How can we delay? We must go. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. You see, Hopeful, even our Lord Jesus was tempted by the great evil one. But of course, Jesus was in the desert. This is like an endless garden. This is Emmanuel's land. Surely when one has come this far, he's immune to Satan's attack. battle is not yours. Christian had read these words many times in the book. The battle is the Lord's. And if the battle is the Lord's, so also the victory. Thus it was, their journey completed. The time came for Christian and Hopeful to enter the celestial city. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness.
never pass away. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. I lost them. They should have been mine. As so many of these are mine. That one over there? Mine. Those three. That one there? Yes, and that one. Now it was time to look for others, those yet vulnerable, those he hoped to win, and winning, take unto himself. There's a possible victim, of course, of course. 